FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. Hey everybody, welcome to Faux Monday, the snackable companion show to FOMO Sapiens. We'll be back on Thursday with my conversation with Jay Shetty. It's a best of show and it really is the best of. It's one of my favorite episodes ever. But until then, happy Faux Monday. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night. And as always, FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Although, I don't know, mid-August, late August, how much FOMO Sapiens do I have in me? Less than usual, probably. (laughs) Now, on Thursday's episode with Jay, we're going to be talking about meditation, getting into it deep. The man knows a lot of things. But in the meantime, I wanted to share my own perspective because as many of you know, and if you don't know it, I'm going to tell you now, I started meditating back in 2019. And since that time, I have basically meditated nearly every day. It's kind of shocking. And 2019, I guess... I missed about 35 days or so. I'm kind of, I keep metrics, so forgive me for that. But more recently, you know, I miss a couple of days a year. And I find that meditating every day really has clear benefits in terms of stress reduction, in terms of focus. My ability to freak out has declined by more than 90%. That's an unscientific measure. Meditation has all kinds of other benefits. It's great for things like blood pressure. It's great for, I believe it just kind of makes you look better because you're more relaxed. It is just an important thing to do in your life. And the thing is many, many, many people want to meditate, but it's really hard to do it, right? I mean, if we all, all of us who sort of said we wanted to meditate actually did it, everybody would meditate. But the reality is it's sticking with it like any other habit. You know, you make the decision to do it, but then actually sticking with it is very difficult. So what I want to do today is talk about just kind of how to do it. And first of all, I do want to be very clear with you. I am not a meditation teacher. I am, you know, I guess I'm an expert in so much as I have my own practice, but there are many, many people out there who teach meditation and that you can go and find and you can find them online and it doesn't cost a lot of money. There's lots of free resources or you can go to some fancy place and take a class, which is nice to do sometimes. But I am not claiming here to be an expert. What I would rather do is say, here's what I have done, here's what I have learned, and this has worked for me. And so that is really important because there, this is an area where there's a lot of wisdom and knowledge and practice built up. And so I have learned some things, I am still learning other things, and it's just important to put that disclaimer out there. So all that said, I wanna share six thoughts Six tips about how to start and maintain, that's the most important. So with all that said, I want to share with you today my six tips on how to start and most importantly, maintain a meditation practice, all right? So let's get started with number one. Recognize that there is no one right way. So when I started meditating, I remember I had this friend from college who had also recently started meditating and I started with five minutes a day maybe even less, maybe it was like three minutes a day. And then I worked up 10 and 12 and this friend was like, well, if you're not doing 30 minutes, then it's not real. And I remember that I had had a guest on the show in the past who said that after nine minutes a day, you start to see real changes in the brain. So my number was nine, like gotta get to nine. So 10 is on top of nine, there we go. Now this person who was so particular, you have to do it this way, they don't meditate anymore because they had this rule. And I think that's one thing I've learned. I've taken a bunch of classes over the years and there's a bunch of different ways to do it. You can lay down, you can sit up, you can walk, you can, there's a lot of different things. You can stare at something, you cannot stare at something, you can focus on mindfulness, you can focus on breathing. There's a lot of different paths depending on who you are, what you need, what resonates with you. It's like anything else, like exercise. Some people like to run, some people like to do yoga, some people like to cycle, some people like to lift weights you can find the one that you like and then you can just do that one. Don't let people tell you there's just one way. FOMO. 
FOMO. Number two, now while it is important to recognize there is no right way, it is important to endeavor to meditate every single day. I think of it kind of like sleep. It's like if you don't sleep all week, you can sleep all weekend, but it's not gonna get you back to where you need to be. Same with meditation. If you don't meditate all week and you just meditate once on the weekend, listen, there's benefit to that, obviously. But doing it every day, even if it's a shorter amount of time, from what I understand and having talked to teachers, that is really important. And it also, by the way, helps you to create the habit. So what I do to meditate every day actually is, you know, again, this is people say, well, you have to meditate in the morning. You have to meditate at night or both or whatever. I like to meditate after work and before the evening. So I have it in my calendar at 6 p.m. meditate. And maybe I meditate at 5.15 and maybe meditate later. And maybe I meditate on the subway on the way to something, or maybe I meditate after a run or, you know, I figure it out every day. I look at my calendar and I say to myself, when will I meditate today? And funny enough, I very rarely miss it, but I did miss yesterday. And it was because yesterday was a crazy day. I didn't figure out in advance where I would fit it in. And I forgot. And so I really, I was really, I'm, I was disappointed in myself. But the other thing is, of course, like you can miss a day and the point is to do it every day, not to be hung up on metrics. That's not, that's not the spirit of meditation. So I'm okay with that. Number three, a great way to start this is mindfulness. Okay, so what is the difference between mindfulness and meditation? The way that I think about it is, you know, meditation is, you know, obviously sitting there and contemplating, focusing on your breath or, you know, other things that you can do. But really it's about kind of looking inward and and the traditional kind of stuff that we talk about sitting cross-legged and breathing and, and sort of focusing on the sensations on your body, stuff like that. Mindfulness can be other forms of that. So it could be petting an animal. Some people, when they pet their dog on the couch, that is an activity of mindfulness. One thing that I like to try to do that's kind of cool is go for a walk and try to notice everything around you, every crack on the sidewalk. It's really about placing your intention and your attention somewhere. So deciding I'm going to pay focus to a certain thing around me. And in doing so, you stop your head from spinning about all the other things you could be potentially thinking about. That's kind of, for me, what mindfulness is, directing your mind towards a particular activity you would like it to do. And so what's great about that is that's kind of like, it's a form of meditation. It's a great way to start working on getting your mind to do what you want it to do. And then once you sort of build some of those muscles, then meditating and trying to just focus on your breath or the sensations around you and your space, it's a little easier because you sort of, you kind of like ran the 10K and now you're going to run a mile or, sorry, a mile is less than 10K. Let's do that again. Ran the 10K, now you're going to do the half marathon, right? <laughs> that's way more apt. So that's a really great way to start. Number five, figure out how you like to do it? How do you feel comfortable? For me, I like to have a comfortable seat. And I have actually in my apartment, like a little area where I have these pillows. I sit down on that cross-legged. I find that comfortable. You can sit on a block. You can sit on a chair, you know, get your feet on the ground. It's really important to be grounded to the ground. And if you're in a chair, make sure your feet are flat on the ground. I've been told that by a number of teachers. Number two, I like to use a timer. I use oak I set that timer and that just allows me actually halfway through, it makes a little little noise to let me know we're halfway through. So if my wind is sort of wandering and I'm not having a very good sit that day, it helps me to say, Patrick, you're halfway through, like kind of focus again. I also, uh, I really like to do group meditation and I did an episode of Foam Mondays all about how to host a group meditation. I find like when other people are in the room, for some reason it's easier for me. So that's a really great thing to do. But you know, you just sit there, cross your legs or put your feet on the floor. I like to put my hands on my lap and I just focus on my breathing. You can even count. You're breathing in for four, hold for two, breathing out for four, things like that. And just breathe slowly, breathe in deep into your belly. It's super relaxing. And as you do it, you know, focus your mind on the feeling of the breath or maybe uh, the feeling of your hands on your legs, or you can focus on like what, you know, kind of scan your body, start at your feet, move up to your knees and so forth, just trying to relax. And once you do that, maybe you can put some music on if you find that helpful. Once you start to do that, you do realize you, you get relaxing and it just kind of feels good. And that's when you know when you're in the place. And maybe you'll even forget that you're doing it. FOMO. FOMO. Number five, do not judge yourself. This is really hard because you'll be sitting there and let me tell you something. 
Some days are better than others. Some days you meditate and you're like, wow, I'm basically, you know, a, a sort of a Jay Shetty, you know, like the Buddha has nothing on me. And then other days you're like, wow, I am a mess. And of course that has to do with what's going on in our lives, right? If you're super chill, you're in a mountain, it's really easy to meditate. If you're stressed out, your boss yelled at you, it's a lot harder. But those are the days when you need it the most. So you may not feel like you're getting much out of it, but I promise you, you are. And in fact, when I feel uber stressed in life and I feel overwhelmed, I will go to meditation. Like during the pandemic in the early days, I was like, Oof, that was my go-to and it really helped me out a lot. But it's easy to judge yourself, it's easy to feel like, oops, I fell asleep and I've done a bad job. Maybe you just needed to sleep that day. Once I told the meditation teacher, I kept falling asleep in class and he was like, I, I, he sort of, sort of looked at me and he was like, you know, <laughs> maybe this is a sign that you need to sleep more. And I was like, well, that's sensible. So it is a daily practice. That's why we call it a practice. You are practicing. You are never gonna be perfect. I don't think anybody's perfect, even the Dalai Lama, not that I asked him, but it just is something you have to keep doing. Don't judge it. Look at it as something where every day you have a different experience and you can learn from it. And finally, number six, this is my little hack and some of you know about this, but if you don't, I actually believe accountability is the key to sticking with it. So when I wanted to start meditating, my friend Ajay and I, we decided to use this app called Habit Share. We signed up and every day when we meditate, we check in and if the other person misses a couple of days, we would send them a note. And in the early days, we really need to do that. Nowadays, we're on autopilot. Like, well, I don't really miss, he doesn't miss. And it's more just like a way of every day I see that Ajay has meditated and it's sort of like, oh, that's our pact. It reminds me if I forgot that I should do it as well. And so it's just a cool way to stay in touch with a friend who has a common interest. So if you wanna be in my accountability group, some of you FOMO sapiens have joined it, just drop me a note at let's connect at patrickmcginnis.com, download Habit Share, I will connect with you and then we can be accountability partners. And when I miss a day, you can send me a little note through the app and say, Patrick, you got to step up your game. All right, so those are my six tips. Let me reiterate them for you. Number one, recognize there's no right way. There are no hard and fast rules on some of this stuff. There are general practices, but the idea that one person's right and the other person is wrong, that's not very meditative. Number two, do it every day. Number three, try mindfulness as a step to building into meditation. Number four, come up with your routine, you know, the seat, the timer, all those things. Number five, don't judge. That is also not very meditative. And number six, find an accountability partner. That can make a huge difference. All right, everybody, those are my tips. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you have a different viewpoint or something that is additive, I'd love to hear about it. Maybe I'll share it on a future episode. So find me at Let's Connect at Patrick McGinnis on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. All right, we'll be back with Jay Shetty, who's gonna give us a masterclass on meditation on Thursday. But until then, take care of yourselves, FOMO sapiens. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. 